and welcome to OT Ideas for Littles. Today we're going to talk about tactile defensiveness and a way to grade a common activity so children with tactile defensiveness can participate and feel successful. Before we get started, if you're interested in watching more videos with ideas similar to this one, please hit the subscribe button and notification so you can be notified whenever there's a new video available. At the end of the video, if you liked it, you can give it a thumbs up too. So what is tactile defensiveness? Tactile defensiveness is a term used to describe the reaction of somebody who is more sensitive to touch than most people. People with tactile defensiveness can be bothered by everyday input. Maybe it's the tags on their clothing or the seams in their socks. Maybe it's certain textures in their food or maybe certain textures when they, when they play. For example, playing in sand or playing with something that gets them messy. Basically, their brain is paying way too much attention to that light touch and is interpreting it sometimes even as painful. For these people, they interpret that light touch as a threat. And when they feel that threat, they often respond in three ways. Fight, flight, or freeze. Just like all of us, when we experience a threat, we kind of go back to those three options. That's all our brain can think about. And that's really common for what we see with children with tactile defensiveness. They immediately want to be done with the activity. They want it off of their body. They want that gone, right? Other kids might shut down. They might not... Um, pay attention to anything else that's going on around them. They might just sort of freeze. Other kids might become aggressive when they feel this input and have that sort of fight reaction. There's different ways that we can work to rewire the brain and rewire the perception or interpretations of this input for these kiddos. So today I wanna to look at a common activity for kids and ways that we can modify that activity um, depending on the child's level of defensiveness to that input. Because really, we want every kid to be able to participate in all the activities that their peers are doing. So if we can help modify activities to make them feel successful, then that's what we should do. All right, so if we take the activity of painting, for lots of kids that I've worked with, this is a common one where it's, it's hard for those kids who are experiencing tactile defensiveness because of the wet, kind of sticky, not too sticky, but more wet um, texture of the paint. Sometimes when that's on their hands, it really, really bothers them. So um, I work with the younger kids. So if somebody's like, hey, let's do some finger painting, this is gonna be a great idea. For a lot of the kids that I work with, this is a nightmare. So let's say this kid is in a classroom and the activity of the day is finger painting. Well, how could we coach that teacher to modify the activity so that this child can participate. Let's start at the beginning. The first idea would be to create some sort of barrier and use a tool to help the child interact with the paint without getting anything on their hands. So we could use a plastic bag and some paint. I would definitely grab some washable paint, but this is all that I had at home today, so that's what I'm gonna use. So, if we open up the bag. And we add some paint. So with the paint inside the bag and using some sort of tool, maybe a popsicle stick, the child could participate by drawing or painting with the paint through the bag. If they're comfortable with that and you feel like they could use a little bit more of a challenge, you could get rid of the tool and have them use their finger through the barrier to explore the paint. Depending on what you're working on, you could draw some letters, you could do shapes or just kind of feel it, right? There's a barrier there, so it's likely their response won't be as strong. They're not gonna feel it as strongly, but they're still getting, you know, to squish it around and feel that texture. So then we might introduce a paintbrush 
um, possibly first without paint, just using some water and painting on a piece of paper. Then we might use that same paintbrush to paint on a piece of paper using just a very small amount of paint. Okay. Again, very small likelihood that this paint is going to touch their skin or they're gonna feel it as a threat. As they become more comfortable with the paintbrush, we could go to a smaller paintbrush. So this one is broken, so I can do this. Maybe they're painting with a smaller paintbrush. Okay, here there is a pretty good likelihood that they're either gonna get it on their hand when they're painting or they're gonna rub their hand against um, the paper while they're painting. We'll talk about some things to work on and remember at the end of this video. You could also have them paint with a pom-pom and a clothespin. Make some dots. And maybe eventually graduating to letting go of the clothespin and just painting with the pom-pom. I would say this is probably the last size tool that a kid is gonna use before they would start to use their finger. So a couple things you wanna remember when you are working with a child with tactile defensiveness and exploring a material that could potentially feel painful or they could potentially have a stronger reaction to or be more sensitive to than other kids. Something to remember is just to model the behavior. We don't wanna be taking a child's hand and making them touch anything that feels threatening or painful to them. So we just wanna model, make it super fun, and hopefully they will do the same. They'll do the same when they're ready, when it feels right for their body. Another thing that we can do is model the response that we would like to see them have to that input. For example, if I'm painting with my finger, I can model, oh no, it's on my finger. I can wipe it off, right? And always having that option there, somewhere to wipe it off, um, some wet wipes, some water to, to put their hands in. Remember, this is challenging for them, so we always wanna be very supportive in that sense. And really, if the child is able to stop, think about what's on their hand and not go into that fight, flight, or freeze response, but, but are able to problem solve, oh, I could wipe this on a napkin, then that is fantastic. Another tip that might help a kiddo with tactile defensiveness participate in activities like painting is to include them in the process. So let's say we're back at the very beginning. We're putting paint into a plastic bag. Instead of just giving them a plastic bag with paint inside, if we're um, including them in the process, we might ask them to help squeeze the bottle of paint into the plastic bag. That way they're seeing, you know, they're learning about it visually, learning about where it comes from, what it looks like, putting it in a safe place, that plastic bag, and then exploring it with their hands. So these same principles can apply to other um, tactile exploration as well. Right now we're in the season of Halloween, so if you were carving a pumpkin um, with a child who experiences tactile defensiveness, most likely that child is not just gonna reach their hands in the pumpkin and start pulling out the guts they might need more of a graded experience. So maybe for them, the experience is exploring the guts of the pumpkin in a plastic bag. Maybe it's picking out the pumpkin seeds to roast. Maybe it's just washing the pumpkin. There's lots of ways that we can include kids with tactile defensiveness in these really important activities of childhood. Another example that comes to mind would be in preparing meals. Likely a child who is experiencing ta tactile defensiveness is not going to want to help make a hamburger patty, for example, but they might help form the patty if it were placed in a plastic bag and they could just push it and help it in that way. I hope this video has provided you a better understanding of what tactile defensiveness is and some strategies to help grade activities so that a child with tactile defensiveness can participate and feel successful. Again, if you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and the notifications if you want to be alerted when there are new videos and thanks for listening. I would use...